After growing up with a mum who had MS and working for the past 15 years with clients who have MS, I've seen some incredible challenges along the way. So this year, I wanted to put myself through my own challenge in order to raise money for various multiple sclerosis charities. I decided to spend five days cycling alone from London to Edinburgh, but I wanted to stop off along the way and visit homes of people with MS. The idea behind the visits were partly to share my knowledge in health and fitness and do some exercise sessions with them, but also to remind myself what people with MS are going through and how they're living their daily lives and also importantly, how their family members are affected by this condition. So the next few minutes will show my journey, the challenges I faced, but I want you to not just focus on the, the challenge itself, but also think about the underlying reasons why I've done this and the fact that we're trying to raise money for hundreds of thousands, well, if not millions of people who have this condition, their family members, to try and help improve the situations for those people in the future. So I hope you enjoy the video and I hope you find it in, inside you to be able to donate some funds towards the cause. Bit by bit, as I visited each of these homes, I started to realize the feelings that those with MS are experiencing in terms of finding themselves to feel more like a burden on their family members and the ever increasing reliance that they have on their family members, whether that's partners or children who are there trying to support them and trying to make sure that they can live together as a family still as successfully as possible. And uh, what I find it's really important to try and reinforce with my clients and anyone who I come across with who has MS is that you're not a burden if you're not able to do the things that you used to do because of this condition. And that might mean you can't work anymore and bring in the income or you maybe can't do the tasks around the house that you used to do. But people aren't with you for those tasks. People are with you because they like you, they enjoy your company. And as long as you can maintain that relationship with someone and be good company, you're never gonna be a burden. So keep doing what you're doing, do what you can to help out, but never consider yourself a burden and remember, the best thing that you can do to offer value as an individual is to be good company, to be an ear, to listen to whatever your family members or your friends have to say, and generally just be present with people when you're with them. That way, you're nobody's burden. Okay, here we are at Finsbury Park Station. I'm about to leave for Edinburgh. Uh, well, here we are. See you in Edinburgh, Tracy. All was going well until about an hour in when disaster struck. So less than an hour in and I've got my first puncture, which is pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I've got to fix that now and then get back on the road. Fixed the puncture, got back on route, and after noticing a few strange name places along the way, I checked Google Maps to realise that I was actually 10 miles east of where I needed to be. Quick detour, get myself back home about an hour behind schedule. I've worked out what the problem was. Uh, in editing my route on Strava, I accidentally deleted all of the checkpoints. So basically it was just taking me quickest route to Edinburgh. So I, I've just rewritten the route, uh, got the stops in there. So I'm about to leave now and I've got about, I think a 60 or 70 mile journey to Peterborough, which is uh, quite far. Uh, so yeah, but Daniel's gonna be waiting there for me, Coach Daniel. All right, let's get, let's get it on. With my new route planned, I got back on the bike and started what I thought was going to be a 60 mile journey towards Peterborough. I ended up going via Cambridge, which took a little bit longer. So managed to stop off for some waffles along the way, uh, but that fueled me up for the next bit of the ride. It's starting to get tricky a bit. Uh, I've got about two hours left to go maybe, I think, and I've got an old recurring was well, a running injury, but it turns out it's also a cycling, <laughs> cycling injury if you cycle for long enough. So it's like runner's knee. Normally kicks in after I run about three kilometers, but which is why I can't run cycling wise. I didn't know, I didn't know it was a thing, but it is apparently. So I'm gonna push on, see how we go. I carry on going, pushing through the pain, which doesn't seem to be getting any worse. My journey to Peterborough is 10 miles longer than I anticipated, so it's actually a 70 mile journey, but eventually I get there in reasonable time. So we're, uh, well, we're, I'm here, I've arrived. <laughs> I cycled 20 minutes past Dania's house, 
because uh, I'm an idiot. Uh, but here we are. She's cooking lasagna. There's Daniel. Give us a wave. Uh, there's Quentin as well. Hello. Poor, poor. He's already got me a beer. In general, not a bad day. Energy-wise, good. My knee really, really hurts. So that's going to be the deciding factor. I did 115 miles today. So about to leave for the day two, or I've got about 37 miles to go this morning. The main issue is my knee, which really, really hurts, but we'll see how it goes. I've taken paracetamol and ibuprofen, and uh, I'm hoping I can just blast through it. We'll see. I take a bunch of painkillers, jump on the bike, and start off on what's a relatively pain-free and rather pleasant journey off to my next stop, which is going to be in Grantham. I make my way to Grantham. Painkillers seem to be doing the trick, and if you look up in the top left of the screen, you can see that this part of the journey is quite a long load of uphills. So, just about to get into, well, not get into Grantham, I'm probably about three miles away or so, so maybe half an hour. Now, I'll be meeting a lady called Debbie, who's got MS. She's uh, she was on my mailing list and she volunteered to host me for lunch. I think she might be cooking me a chilli or something. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, and we're going to do a bit of exercise. I find my way to my lunchtime stop where I'm welcomed with a very large bowl of pasta. And then I run through some exercises with Debbie before making my way through the next leg. Things seem to be going okay, but along the way, disaster strikes. Had to pull over due to some unexpected challenges. Uh, one being, although sore knee from yesterday miraculously healed when I started riding this morning, and I don't know why or how. Uh, new sore knee on the other leg has happened since I started after lunch. So, and that's actually quite painful. So I've had to stop over, pull over, pop some painkillers, but also falling asleep while riding. I didn't even know that was a thing. The painkillers don't seem to do much to help, and as you get closer and closer to my destination, the knee becomes more and more painful. Eventually, I end up having to walk the last few steps up a hill in order to get to my hotel. So day two review. Uh, it was way harder than day one for mm, a few reasons. It was a harder route, more hills, and... Uh, but the main thing which actually caused me, I had to stop, I had to walk. <laughs> I had to walk like the last 10 yards because although my bad knee got good and disappeared, my good knee started hurting. It became so painful, I had to get off the bike and walk, I couldn't get up a hill. So I'm kind of hoping it's going to fix itself overnight like my other knee did, but I'm not optimistic because if it's that that painful tomorrow i won't be able to do it hopefully the magic of rest will will do some good but i went to see lynn and craig as well and they're the people that have put me up in the hotel tonight nice to meet craig it's the first time i've ever met well it's the first time i've ever met lynn and craig both lovely people so that's good but i'm pooped so i'm going to try and get some rest and uh let's see how things go in the morning but i might need to come up with a plan b in case they don't go to plan A. So, 6.45, about 15 minutes before I got to leave today. Uh, difficult one yesterday, legs feel swollen and sore today. And the knee issue on the left, I did a bit of research, I self-diagnosed and uh, it, I think it might be calcium deposits going into unusual places in my joints because that was the only way I can think of it just to suddenly disappear like that. So um, when I was cycling yesterday, like the pain would be, it would be like pain, 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 ah, like that, like for some explained reason every so often. So, uh, so I'm hoping that the calcium deposits have dispersed and today I'm going to be able to go on, but I've got quite a long one this morning going up to Alm uh, to see a lady called Katie and uh, it's going to be about a five hour ride this morning so 60 miles I think which is long for a first stint but should make the afternoon stint a bit shorter a bit easier maybe. I set off on my journey and I've got to try and go up the same hill that I had to walk up the night before and quickly I realised that there's no way I can possibly reach my first stage with this much pain. 
Fortunately, as I get to the top of the hill, everything turns to downhill and I'm able to follow the route successfully for the next hour or so. At that point, I get off and I call my wife and I realise I've done 10 miles of excruciating pain, but I figure if I've done 10 miles, I can do another 50. Stopped off at the service station. I'm about uh, halfway to my next stage. I left the, the hotel this morning and like about 10 minutes in, I was like, shit, that, that I'm not going to make this. And then I started thinking, right, what do I do? What's plan B? Because the knee was so painful. I thought, no, I've got six hours, five hours of cycling. It wasn't going to work. But uh, I just thought, let's, let's plow on and see what happens. And I took loads of painkillers, did a concoction of ibuprofen, paracetamol and aspirin because I thought I'll hedge my bets. And, uh, and it's sort of not got any worse and I'm three hours down the line. So should be good and hopefully I'll get there in about three hours or so. I'll keep you updated. I carried on for the next three hours in serious pain, but I just kept reminding myself of the chronic pain that a lot of people with MS live with and that pushed me on. I've made it to the village. I don't know how it's been excruciating pain for the past two hours probably, uh, but every step's like, uh, uh, but I'm here. I understand there's a chicken casserole waiting for me. Then we're gonna do some exercise. Then I'll try and do the second leg for the day. We'll see, see how that goes then. After refueling and taking Katie through some various exercise techniques, I jumped on the bike and made my way to Hartlepool with a bit of help from some Volteral painies along the way. Quick update on the journey so far. So, had my lunch at Katie's house uh, and some, some Volteral painies like stuff, which is awesome because uh, I think either I've miraculously cured my other knee again or the painkillers are working. So, I've got about 15 miles left to go. Should be good. With the painkillers doing their job, I was able to make my way safely to Hartlepool. Uh, I arrived about an hour later than expected. Big day. I've, I've just reached West, whatever this road's called. Uh, long, long second stint, longer than anticipated. So I've done a two 60 mile stints, which is killer, but I'm here now. So I'm just about to knock on the door of a stranger to go and say hello. So all set, ready to go for day four. Uh, had a lovely evening uh, with, a, with a lady and her daughters who's looked after me, put me in the hot tub, uh, fed me very well. But now I'm off up to South Shields. It's gonna be about two and a half hour journey before a quick, quick morning stop. With my injuries under control, I jumped on the bike and made my way to South Shields, looking forward to what was a relatively short journey. Unfortunately, I didn't see a hazard that was about to come my way. As you can see, I'm by the coast, I'm on like the north coast cycle something or other. There's so much glass, it's, a puncture's inevitable, which is not ideal, but we'll see. Legs, well knees okay, right leg feels swollen because I think it's overworked from doing all the work yesterday, uh, but that's not, that's not too bad. Wind's a bit annoying. Too many hills. Who knew the north was full of so many hills? So no, it's, it's cold, my fingers are numb, but apart from that, we're all good. I managed to avoid the punches, continue my route, and arrived at my first stop in South Shields. Just made it to my next, or first stop for the day. Uh, just meet a nice lady called, well, <laughs> I say a nice lady, she might be terrible, I don't know, <laughs> but a, a lady called Rachel, who I think's done the MS Warrior program, maybe. We'll find out. Right, I mean, Rachel's house, give us a wave, Rachel. <laughs> She's doing some sit to stands, and but I've had some nice, uh, look at the strength of the legs. There you go. I've had some some nice, what were they, muffins? Crumpets. Crumpets? Muff no, Crumpets. They were muff no, they were muffins, yeah. yeah. I've had some muffins, I've had a bit of uh, a sniff from the dog, and now I'm about to get back, get back on my way. Back on the bike, making my way over towards the River Tyne, where I encounter a problem that I wasn't expecting. I've just come down this strange tunnel underneath the River Tyne, I guess. <laughs> it's, the escalator's not working. 
Look how tall it is. I've got to go up that. It's like 5,000 steps with my bike and dead legs. This is the worst. It's okay. A man arrived and he's shown me that there were some lifts. Weird echo. There are some lifts, so I don't have to go up those stairs. I push on to my next stop, overly optimistic that I have enough time for two lunchtime visits. Not the case. To reach my lunchtime stop, I'm going to be visiting Roger, who's got MS. He's, uh, he's, the reason I know Roger is because he's done custom fit program. I think he did the MS Warrior program before that as well, and he's currently doing the Warrior 2. Uh, but unlike most of my clients, uh, I've actually met Roger already. Last year we did a bike ride, a similar type thing. No, nowhere near as intense, but from the Lake District across to Tyneside. And Roger came down and met with a bunch of other people from the MS Society. So I've already had the pleasure, but we're going to go in, have a bit of lunch. <laughs> I need to rest my butt because it is sore. Uh, and then we're going to have a bit of a chat back. So I see if I can do anything to help him on that side of things. So uh... I depart hoping for a smooth journey to my Airbnb, but I didn't realise that Mother Nature had different ideas. Now, see that? You know what that means? It means we're in a pretty windy part of uh, the country, but also the way they're facing basically means the wind's going north to south, which is the opposite of which way I'm going, so pretty cool. I push on into the headwind, going very slow because it's quite hard work, as if I'm cycling up a hill. Oh boy, this seemed like a good place to stop because I was going to check out Warkworth Castle, which is pretty spectacular. I checked the weather forecast, as you can see, that looks some pretty grey sky. There's going to be some serious rain in a minute, so I'm going to get my waterproof booties on and stuff like that. It's been pretty wet. I mean, this is a light shower. I've had torrential rain in my face, looking pretty cool, right? Uh, but it's all right. I'm not too. Not, well, I say not too far away, I'm <laughs> about two and a half hours away, but hopefully it'll dry up. I think I'm making progress, but I realise at this point I'm nowhere near my destination. Okay, so I've just, uh, <laughs> I've just realised I'm nowhere near my destination. I thought it was quite close, but it turns out I'm 25 miles away, which is about a best two hours minimum. So. It's getting, the sun's about to set, as you can see. I don't really have the right kit for cycling in the dark. Uh, I've got my lights, but I don't have any high-vis stuff. So, so I'm not sure what to do. I'm gonna have a think, and, but push on. I push on mainly due to the accountability from all of those people that have sponsored me already. I was, I was worried a bit uh, that my Airbnb people would be getting pissed off because I told them I'd be there at 6 p.m. and they're like, I'm going to get there at 9. Or So I messaged and I said, I like, is there a cut-off point? Do, do I need to get a taxi? And they've spurred me on. <laughs> so And then I found this as well. So I'm going to keep pushing. Uh, also, look at this like Brampton or Brunt, some sort of castle. That's pretty cool though. I love a castle in me. As it gets darker, I realise that I've probably taken on too big a challenge on this particular day. So, here I am. Uh, I made it, sort of, to, to, to my destination, but I've cheated a bit, uh, which it pains me to say. Basically, I carried on, uh, and it got darker, uh, and then my battery went on my front light. And I'm crazy. I'm not crazy enough to cycle around winding roads uh, at night time that I don't know without any lights. So, so I had to get uh, call up a cab and get them to take me the last sort of ten miles or so. But I figured I did an extra ten miles on the first day. So, what we're doing is we're we're moving those ten miles across to this day to try and make sure that I've still covered in excess of the distance probably. Uh, so a bit annoying because I really wanted to do it, but I'm kind of glad because in the taxi on the way, it, the weather was atrocious. It was dark, it was windy, it was rainy. So <clears throat> I'd have almost certainly have died anyway. But Check out the bags. I look bad. Right. Uh, so look, ready to go. 
relatively short day comparatively today so we're gonna uh, I'll ride up the coast stop off at Dunbar for lunch and then head up to Edinburgh have a quick shower sign in at the hotel and then I'll be able to meet the guys from the MS Society when I get there all being well in one piece but <laughs> probably very knackered I start my journey to Dunbar which I'm told is actually pronounced Dunbar <laughs> how do you like that I carry on up the northeast coast to my destination and there's a lot of hills and a lot of wind directly in my face. So this is horrible. <laughs> it's just a series of hills or if it's not a hill, it's a flat going into a serious headwind, which is basically feels like you're going up a hill. So I'm just constantly pounding the legs and going really slow, like nine miles an hour or something, which means it's going to take me about 40 years to get to Edinburgh at this rate. So yes, yeah, it's good. Right in the middle of a wind farm. I've never seen one of these so close up before, actually. As you can hear, they're quite noisy. In the distance, you just think they're silent. Oh, we've got some sheep. That was me, by the way, not them. So that's the North Sea. I'm not sure where I'm going, but somewhere over there, I think. And we, we can probably see Edinburgh in the distance, but I know we did. I carry on into the headwind with my Garmin taking me down some questionable routes and eventually I find myself in Dunbar. So I've just stopped off in Dunbar for a quick lunch. I've got myself there uh, a nice haddock and chips and, uh, and a beer. So yeah, and a nice lady served me. She's, uh, she's working uh, she, against her will. She's retired, but uh, yeah, here we are, lunch time. So I just had my fish and chips and when I asked for the bill, Ray, the lovely lady in the bar, she said, and I, I'm not going to try and do the accent, but she said, the boss man says you can have it for free and put the money towards the charity. So I've basically got a 20 quid donation I want to put in in return for that meal. So that was super nice. So now I'm on the home straight to Edinburgh going directly west, which means I'm avoiding the headwind and it's actually plain sailing all the way into town. So I've just arrived at my hotel in Edinburgh. Uh, no updates along the way because I smashed it straight here from Dunbar uh, and did it quite a good time under three hours or so. So I'm just going to settle down in my room. My battery's about to die. I'll charge the phone up, give us a full update, and then we'll go and meet uh, Tracy and the gang. I'm back in the room. Well, not back in the room. I'm in my hotel room. I've made it. Uh, I've had a shower, freshened up. All I need to do is put on a bit of lippy and then uh, I'm off to go and see the MS Society crew and Tracy and the gang. Uh, so, should be good, feeling all right-ish. I, I mean, I feel a wreck, if I'm entirely honest, but in terms of journeys today, first half was horrendous, second half was a breeze. But yeah, all good to go. Uh, looking forward to catching up with the guys. Very tired, also looking forward to going home, seeing my wife give her a cuddle and give my daughter a belly blower as well. Uh, but I just had to FaceTime with them on the phone and my daughter doesn't seem that interested in me at the moment. We'll see. Maybe she'll get excited when I come back tomorrow. That bad you came. <laughs> so, I'm here with the, uh, the MS Society crew. She just said I look terrible on camera. <laughs> He's looking forward to his tapas. We're all going to have a bit of tapas. Hello! Hi, that's Tracy. <laughs> She's organised all of this, so thanks to Tracy. And, <laughs> no, not really, boo. But yeah, anyway, we're having a lovely time, uh, and this is this is effectively the end of the journey, really. Uh, yeah, so well done. I got a nice present from the gang. Uh, <laughs> a, some alcoholic iron brew. What's it called? Vault City. Iron Vault City, brew. and uh, some badges, MS Society badges, which I'm wearing. That one points up, as you can see. Uh, and a nice card and Tunnock's Caramel Wafer.